Hello, this is Noel Floating in the Clouds, and this is going to be my spoiler-free review of The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. If you're new to this channel, I do do book... I do do. I do do all the time. If you are new to this channel, I do book reviews, and I talk about the ones that I like, the ones that are meh, and the ones that are really, really good, and the ones that I love to the ends of the earth. This is one that I just love to the ends of the earth. It got me out of a reading slump. I was in a really bad reading slump for a couple weeks there. I had just finished Daughter of Smoke and Bone and a couple other books that I was just not feeling. Um, they were okay, but it just took me a couple of weeks to just read those books and usually if I really 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 am into a book I'll be able to finish it pretty quickly like this one I finished within three days because it was so good this book is so good the squishmallow is reading it just look at this squishmallow already halfway through the book now to not interrupt him because he's going to finish it do you love drama drama What's the book about? Avery Kelly Grams is a broke teenager living in her car. She plays chess in the park with a homeless man and every time that she does win, she owes him a meal. Every time that he wins, he doesn't have to accept the meal from her. Before her mother passed away, her mom would play random games that she would make up so that Avery could find solutions to very difficult situations. And one day she's summoned to the reading of a will of a man she's never met before. At the reading of the will, it is discovered that billionaire Tobias Hawthorne has given everything that he is worth over to Avery Kylie Grams upon his passing. But there is one catch. Avery must live within the walls of Hawthorne House for at least one year before she can inherit everything that she was given. And now Avery must adjust to this very lavish lifestyle that she's not accustomed to while dealing with the wrath of the disinherited family that just wants her out of the picture. I give this book easily a 5 out of 5. This is a great introduction to a trilogy. This first book keeps you guessing on what's going to happen next and how the main characters are going to solve the riddles that they are presented with. All the characters are very fleshed out. All the characters, the scenes, the items that are in this novel all serve a purpose to the overall plot. The pacing of this novel is very fluid and it keeps you moving from chapter to chapter to chapter until you're at the very end and it leaves you on this cliffhanger but it satisfies the objective of the overall plot. What is the objective? And the objective of the first book is to find out why Avery is at Hawthorne House in the first place. It's about her building relationships with the jaded Hawthorne brothers in order to find out why Tobias Hawthorne brought them all together in the first place and why he brought them together specifically these five characters. This book does leave you off on a cliffhanger, but it leaves you wanting more and it makes you want to read the next book right away. I'm already on the second one and I'm 60% of the way done. Who is this book for? This is very much a rags to riches story. There's a bit of murder mystery elements. There's riddles involved in this book that you have to do no work for. They do all the work for you. So you're just like, I'm gonna sit back, keep reading. So if you like riddles, but you don't like solving them, that's perfect for you. They do the work for you in this book. Avery is about 17 years old, but it doesn't feel like you're getting the voice of a 17 year old. It feels like you're, getting the voice of a mature, maybe 21, 25 year old. It's not very angsty. And the reason I give this one a five out of five is because it's just so easy to read. A lot of books are just very difficult. Sometimes when it's the first book in the series and people are like, oh my God, you, should, you just have to wait until book two or three and then it starts getting good. But this is a really good introduction to the start of a trilogy. I really enjoyed that I could just go from chapter to chapter to chapter and I was engaged the whole time. I was learning something new 
there wasn't really info dumping. There was a lot of names at maybe in like chapter five or somewhere wherever they read the will the reading of the will there was a lot of names so i had to start writing down names and writing descriptions of each character in order to keep track but you end up following these characters for the rest of the novel and i've been reading a lot of books where they introduce 10 characters and you follow two for the rest of the novel and the other eight were kind of wasted side characters. So I'm glad that she's very efficient with not only her characters, her scenes, with items in the novel. If it's if she's going to put a knife on a table, then some character is going to use it eventually. If there's going to be a gun introduced at any point, it's going to be used. It's like the whole Chekhov's gun thing where if you're going to introduce a gun in a play, have it go off eventually. It Everything, every character, every scene, every item in this book is used for plot and it's brought back and it's very satisfying. There is a build to a romance in this novel and it doesn't feel rushed. It doesn't feel false there's a lot of stories where it's just instant love and both characters were meant to be fate brought them together and this isn't like that the characters that do eventually start catching feelings for each other there's a reason for it and they spend a lot of time together and you see how they start to take care of each other and you're rooting for them but they don't even know that they're in love yet. I think you should read it. Just go out and buy it. This is definitely one book. If you can find it at a library and you can check it out easily, I would just check it out from the library. I was able to borrow the audiobook from Libby for free and I had it for two weeks. I used it within three days and I finished that that audiobook and I was just listening to it but some people don't like audiobooks that's okay like I said if you can find it at a library for free and you can just rent it out just rent it out if not Target usually does sell the first copy of this book so does Walmart sometimes Barnes and Nobles should have it but I usually have trouble finding first copies of any book at Barnes and Nobles but if if you don't really like to spend money, like I said, go to the library first, try that. And then if you absolutely do want to read it and you liked my recommendation, then Target, Walmart, Barnes & Nobles, or even Amazon. Amazon usually has, has books for cheaper. I'm all about if you need to save money, save money. Libby app is free and if you like ebooks you can also download the Libby app if you have a library card already you could just download free ebooks from there and download them onto your Kindle that way you could just read wherever you are you can read on your phone you can read on your tablet you can read on your computer if you have the Kindle app on your computer it's just if it's free it's me 5 out of 5 5 out of 5 Thank you for tuning in. I know this is a rather short video. There wasn't really much to talk about. Usually when I enjoy a book, it's harder for me to talk about the book without spoiling it. I really enjoyed it and I hope you enjoy it too. Well, just thank you for watching this video. I appreciate everybody that watches it, likes it, subscribes. Well, have a good day, everybody. Squishmallow says goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Oh, goodbye. Goodbye. I'm Sergeant Jiggly Wiggly Piggly. Goodbye. <laughs> Boba T. Squishmallow says goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>